And that certainly seems like the thing is we don't really know how much is being disclosed at this point. And this bill tackles that in multiple different ways. In addition to strengthening the Foreign Agent Registration Act, it also has kind of a dark money angle aimed at uh, 501c4s and um, foreign connected PACs. Um, would one of you want to speak a little bit about that? Well, I think that what we're trying to do is to get disclosure uh, so that any entity that's out there that might be donating money, that we know who they are, how much they're giving. Uh, I've been shocked actually to find some of the uh, investigative reports that show that American citizens working for foreign interests then figure out how to uh, move money into U.S. campaigns. Uh, we, we simply have to keep American elections for American citizens and not have all of this influence coming from the outside. I don't know what the story is with the National Rifle Association, but to hear that Russia, um, run by a dictator with his oligarch buddies, somehow donated money to the NRA, which then uh, makes decisions about who they're going to endorse and so forth, and puts out a lot of literature. Uh, I am very uncomfortable with that. And um, I was shocked when a national security uh, individual, Michael Flynn, was photoed in Moscow uh, at an event for a Russian uh, television station uh, and media before the election, along with another candidate who was running from the, I think, Green Party. Um, just, uh, I thought, these are American citizens? Who paid for their trip over there? What are they What are they doing? And we're finding, we know that we live in an era of hybrid warfare where many of these foreign countries that don't love liberty, liberty is not on their agenda, try to influence what's happening here uh, in the United States. We now found out, find out how they're using social media with bots and different ways of trying to present false messages to the American people. I think we have to protect the ramparts. I think we have to protect the Republic from this influence. And you mentioned social media. That's such an important hot topic right now with everything in the news and all of the recent revelations about different bots and influence campaigns and political advertising. And I believe there's actually a hearing today on that this morning. Um, would you want to talk a little bit about what the bill does to help increase enforcement and kind of amend the law so that it's a little more up to date with social media? Yeah, you know, one thing I do want to give is the bill number 6249. We have close to two dozen uh, co-sponsors yeah. now. That's pretty good uh, in the House of Representatives. Especially having and a bipartisan agreement on this. That's such an important thing to actually be able to push the bill through. Do you think it has um, much chance to pass, hopefully? Well, I would say, you have to be at the tip of the spear, right, Walter? Well, <laughs> I would say this. I want to give Ms. Captain so much credit. She has been out in front of this issue for many, many years, and I joined her a few years ago. This is going to take the American people demanding that the House, and if it goes Democrat, she'll be in a great position to have influence, and I'll join her again. We need to get the American people outraged by this uh, fact that foreign governments are dictating our policy. And it sounds like a lot of that outrage would need to be based on education. I think a lot of people haven't really focused on this in the past, and the bill would be certainly a step in the right direction of getting that information out there. For example, the social media disclosure policies, that type of thing, actually adding that into the bill as opposed to FARA, which was more targeted towards traditional media. So that's great to see that come more up to date. And did you want to speak a little bit about what that does? Sure. So, you know, the, the, the things that the bill would do in terms of getting foreign money out of American elections should be, it should be uncontroversial. In a perfect world, it would be uncontroversial. And, and a little bit of background, for a hundred years, corporations couldn't spend money in American elections at all. So you didn't need specific rules about foreigners routing money through corporations because corporations could spend. Then in 2010, when, this, when the Supreme Court decided the Citizens, Citizens United case and opened the, the floodgates to um, corporate spending, there, was no, there were no laws in place to make sure that the money that corporations were now spending, hundreds of millions of dollars, was coming from American sources and American citizens. And there's still no uh, rules in place to, to prevent that, so, or to, to require that. 
So what, what this bill would do is uh, require corporations, would, corporations now have a constitutional right to spend money in elections, but this bill would say you have to be an American corporation, meaning you can't take more than 20% of your money from foreign sources or, or have more than 20% foreign ownership and, and set a very low um, cap for foreign government ownership of a corporation. If you're 5% owned by a foreign government, you shouldn't be spending money in American elections. And uh, this is why this is so important. Uh, it's hard to change Washington, D.C. I've been here 22 years. The scat a little bit longer than I've been here. And it's hard to shake the tree. That's why this is so important. You'll get more American attention to the fact that they think foreign entities are influencing our elections. This is one of those issues that really is a lot easier to beat the drum on this one because of the issue of the involvement of foreign entities in our campaign. That's why this Refuse Act is so important that we get behind this now and also in a new Congress. I wanted to mention that uh research by very good organizations like the Center for Responsive Politics has shown that going back, looking at 2015, a Chinese uh, businessman donated $1.3 million to uh, Jeb Bush's Right to Rise Super PAC. Uh, Saudi Arabia in the following year uh, invested $3.5 billion in Uber, uh, which gave Saudi Arabia a 5% stake in the company. And uh, the question is, will they be trying to influence uh, U.S. policy? We want to shut down that window. Uh, I mentioned before Paul Manafort, uh, who has been receiving millions of dollars by supporting the candidate uh, in the Ukrainian presidential elections that is allied with the dictator in Russia. How any American could accept millions of dollars from those kinds of people is a complete shock to me. But under the current law, he didn't report. And what our bill would do is it would uh, make much stricter reporting requirements so that this couldn't happen again, that the Department of Justice would actually have the ability to um, uh, be strengthened, be staffed, to assure that people are reporting and that those kinds of activities are blocked. And one thing you mentioned in addition to the increase in reporting requirements is giving that power to the Department of Justice. Yes. Um, it's my understanding that one of the things your bill does is um, gives that, I believe, civil investigative demand authority to the DOJ's FARA unit. Did you want to speak a little bit about what that does? Yeah, I, I alluded to it earlier that one of the problems with the existing law is that Department of Justice has very few tools to enforce it, to, to um, determine who should be registered and reporting as a foreign lobbyist and, and isn't. And so the bill would, would give the Department of Justice significantly more tools to be able to get the information it needs to actually in, enforce the law, either in, including criminally when necessary. So with all of the different um there are registrants that should be registered but who aren't necessarily disclosing in some cases millions of dollars in spending, this would allow them to look into that a bit more and actually be able to identify that? Yeah, and, and identify it and prosecute when, when prosecution is appropriate. I think that point is, so, uh, is, is really key. They would prosecute. If you don't enforce the laws, it doesn't do a whole lot of good. This is a great bill because it's got enforcement in there. And that is a key to success. So it wouldn't just make things illegal and increase disclosure, but it would actually give them mechanisms so that they can actually implement that. And I, I just want to say something about Walter and I have been gifted by the American people sending us here over many terms, and we've really come to understand what happens. Absolutely. And so recently there was an election in Ohio for a seat in Congress. The amount of money spent in this campaign was over ten and a half million dollars. Now, um, that's 61 times more than the job pays. So it's excess. It's way more than you need to spend, all right? So what people do, rather than focusing on the job, they're focusing on raising the money uh, to get the job. And these kinds of 
of uh, individuals and organizations that are foreign, uh, that they're looking for opportunities to influence people who are desperate to raise those kinds of sums of money. Who can raise that kind of money? Who can raise that kind of money in this day and age? And so members of Congress become uh, ATM machines trying, trying, trying to win the election, trying to raise this money. So they become very vulnerable to all kinds of influences that sometimes in the heat of a campaign, right, your young staff, your accountants and so forth, they don't really sometimes catch these uh, donations, right? And um, uh, we're trying to say, no, we need to have much stricter uh, boundaries here uh, to curb the donations in the first place and to require much greater transparency. And a bill like this should pass easily. But there's always forces outside of Congress that don't want to see this kind of bill move forward. That's why, again, it's so important that we get the word out with her leadership to the American people. There's a chance that we can bring the government back to you, the American people. Do you think that some of that pressure for fundraising is feeding into the opposition to this type of reform? Oh my goodness. Yes. Uh, the, uh, both uh, Congressman Jones and I have had bills introduced in this chamber for years, for years and years and years. They never see the light of day. They are suppressed, they're put under the table, regardless of either of our major parties being in charge. And the American people know it. And that's why the American people are angry they want to clean that place up, clean that place up. Well, you know, they, uh, they said to uh, President Trump, you know, he said, I'm going to drain the swamp. Well, he brought big alligators into the swamp. Uh, and uh, yeah, yeah, so here we are. Uh, the American people still won't get what they thought they were voting for. And certainly in campaign finance reform, this needs to be a presidential issue. The American people must be heard on this, and they really have to save the republic. Because when I first got to Congress, and I don't know, Walter, when you know you came, this whole money game wasn't anything like it is today. It, it is a scourge on the republic right now. And people are running around to fundraisers. They're on the phones all the time, uh, not in their office, but they have to go to other buildings uh, to raise money, and it takes up so much time. Imagine, I say to anyone listening to this program, if you had to raise $10 million or you won't win your election, where are you going to get it? Who can do that? It excludes the majority of Americans from even trying, from even trying, right, Walter? Yep, I mean, it's just, again, if the Democrats take back the House, I hope that Marcy Captain will go right to who's going to be the Speaker of the House and say, you need to say, when you accept the Speaker of the House, this bill I have put in, we're going to reintroduce it, and I'm going to tell you, you move it. I hope that happens. I hope it happens too, Walter. I really do. Uh, and then as we approach 2020, we need to look for presidential candidates uh, in each of our early right. states, along with American people in those places who are committed to real reform. Put this right at the top of the agenda. Because if you don't get this right, the rest won't follow. Because you're not going to get the kind of people to serve who only go to the money masters. You really, and it, it makes it so difficult uh, for both parties. We go to yes. these caucus meetings, right, Walter? Yeah, you see what happens. Uh, and uh, it has come to be a big giant inside both caucuses raising money. It never used to be that way. It it's never. out of control. Yes. And that, I think you hit the nail on the head right there, is that this type of influence spending on what policies are being made and who is actually our elected officials impacts everything else. It's not just one isolated incident, and that's why I think it's so very important, um, especially bills like this. And so it's great to see some progress being made. Thank you both so much again for being here, and thank you, Ada, for thank being you. here as well. Thank you, Walter. Thank you. It's a privilege to be allied with you. You're such a good man. Thank you very much for being with us, Anna. Thank you. It's such an honor to be here. Thank you so much. All right.